Yeah, right, y'all, I'm back on. I don't see nobody. <laughs> I think y'all still in the last chat. You're still in the old chat. I'm waiting to see if some people want them. Hey, be down. Okay, it wasn't saying anybody was on here. Okay, back in. Hey, Patricia. Hey, Kenneth. Hey, Star. <sighs> But yeah, so like I was saying, we need to be working towards that, especially if you're serious. If you, if you're a, a real Indian, if you're not um, just internet Indian, that's what we need to be doing. We need to be taking action, and it doesn't have to do with anybody else. You know, you can see me. You can hear me too, right? Because um, the video went out on my laptop for some reason. My laptop's not that dang old for it to be working and then one minute. Like, when we start getting deep in the conversation, then it messes up. Uh -uh. But the internet, it says, first it says that the bandwidth wasn't working, but I can see my bandwidth was all the way, all bars, so it doesn't make sense. But yeah, yeah, be down. These internet Indians, let me see if I can set it down. Let's see you a little better. <sighs> wow, that's a bad angle. <laughs> it's, it's bad. Hold on, let me see if I can put some. See all my meal prep stuff on the side. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, we need to be doing something different. We shouldn't be, especially the single mothers, like single parents and those single fathers out there, too. Or people just, you know, people just getting by. We shouldn't have, we shouldn't be cramming ourselves up in the city and paying high rent for what? When you can be investing in it, you can be paying that money towards a mortgage, you know. What you say? Yeah, action is the measure. We should be taking action, you know. It's like all these people did all these things to get us where we are now, and we just kind of sitting back, playing PlayStation, watching YouTube makeup videos and other stuff that doesn't get us anywhere. It really doesn't. Like, okay, those things are fun, <laughs> but it, it doesn't get us. Any. I'm not trying to be no um, party pooper or nothing. We could be. I think it would be more fun if we were actually around our own people and feeling more comfortable. And not having to worry about a lot of these issues some people worry about in the city, racism, discrimination, poverty issues, you know, have our own communities and, and try to regulate ourselves, right? That That's the start to at least have a community with your family. You hear Duke? Okay. Yeah, so, you know. Get back to that, to the old school. That's what we used to do. Everybody can get together for the barbecue or the cookout or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, work to help each other. Hey, Eric. Yeah, so. And one of the parts of getting back to being self-sufficient is learning our old spirituality as well. We have learned these new colonial spiritualities. And we have learned foreign spiritualities, like African spirituality. So we need to be learning the American spirituality as well. You know, OCO, cuz of. <laughs> but yeah, we, the, that, and the language. I just was speaking, oh, I don't know Cherokee, but I just know OCO. <laughs> I just know that means hello. We should be speaking our languages or creating something new. Like, if we can't get everything that we have back, we need to be creating something new. And, you know, that's part of the language is part of the culture. It's, there's things encoded in languages for some people who understand that esoteric side of it. The language is very important. Now, they, they want us to just let our languages die. And, you know, there has to be a reason behind that. Right. 
Bukomiko, right, Bukomiko, Virginia. Um, yeah, so it's very important that we start doing that. And we know that there's a lot of people who are gatekeepers and holding us back from a lot of information and talking about the information is sacred, this and that, and we're only letting certain people. Well, we're not going to get far if only certain people know certain things. Maybe those certain people need to come back and teach other people what that what is allowed for them to know. They don't have to know everything, but you can't just be like cutting everybody off because there's some people who are on that level who are not being cultivated in that type of spirituality that they need to be. Some of us come from lines of shaman and medicine men and women. Steven says, when you grow your own food, you have enough. It's a lot of have enough for your family and some to sell. Yeah, and that's what they used to do. That's why what people in my family used to do. They had their own land and they had their own farms. Uh, great grandparents had like a farm and they had a hog farm too. So they would slaughter hogs and sell it and... I don't eat pork, but I'm just saying what they did. And they also um, had fruits and vegetables. So what they did was got enough for themselves first, and then they sold the access. And my great-grandfather, he would work another job as well to make money for the family. And while the wife, she would, you know, manage the household and also do the leftover work for the farm. So they'll wake up at like 5, 4 or 5 in the morning, work the farm, then he, you know, she'll make breakfast, he'll go to work, and she'll just try to finish up the loose ends of things while he's at work, and then when he comes back, he'll finish up stuff too, and I mean, that's just how they used to do, do it back in the day, into a community garden, yeah, starting a community garden in the city, if y'all can't leave yet, starting a community garden in the city right now is a great option, and like I said, growing in your kitchen, Having indoor gardens, you know, growing herbs and things, mint and cilantro and basil and stuff. You can easily grow that indoors or on your porch or on your um, your balcony and stuff, window seals. But that's what we used to do. We had communities and the neighbors beside them had their own farm. They sold beans or whatever, like they grew beans or, you know, people did different things that they were, that was their specialty. And then they would take the stuff to the market on the weekends and sell it. So my great-grandfather had a regular job, and then he still worked on the week. Like, he didn't stop working. That's just how they did it. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. He said thanks for my channel. <sighs> yeah, so we just have to. The thing now is we know what's going on. A lot of us know what's going on. We know that it's GMO foods. We know that the vaccines and all the other scary stuff and y'all want to talk about the elite and the other group that y'all keep calling them by the wrong name but now it's time for action and solution and it doesn't have to be a violent thing we tried that our tribes tried the violence it didn't work we might have to do something different i'm not saying not to defend yourself if you need to which is basic human nature but we have to find solutions to better ourselves in, in the situation that we're in and we're in the situation because of our ancestors and what they sacrificed and the mistakes also that they did yeah enough reacting we need to be acting we need to be doing to so give out a lot of great information thank you thank you yeah, it's just something to think about because I'm not hearing a lot of people talk about this. And it's not a lot enough, not a lot, ugh, not a lot of us women speaking out. And um, we have a lot of that, the energy, the, we don't have a balance of energy. So I'm trying to, I'm more of a calm person. So I'm trying to bring my calm, kind of nurturing energy into the conversation and bring solutions, right? Do y'all got any questions? Questions? 
it's also good to just start planning right now. If you if that's what you want to do, if you want to move out the city, start planning. You might have to move to the suburbs first and make that step and then move to the country and have a house built or, you know, like I said, you can put a trailer there. Y'all don't need nothing fancy. You can always build up from where you're at. But it's for the mental health of our people, a lot of people are, are not fit. It's not humanly consumptual. <laughs> is, that, is that a word? It's not healthy, basically, for humans to be cramped up like that. They've already done all these psychological tests. We saw the, the experiment called the Projects that they did on us, having us cramped up in there. We've seen it here, we've seen it every, like different countries have done that test. Russia has done the test. China has done the test. Certain other places in in um, in um Europe, they've had these project buildings. And it clearly is a project because a lot of horrific things have happened. And the people have been stagnant. You, they know you can't just stack people up on each other. Yeah, that's why it's called a project. It's a dang on project. And they really screwed us over. Monsanto, yeah. And I was just watching the interview with the prodigy of Mob Deep was talking about Monsanto and how they how they funded Obama and how our people were just blinded and they wanted to use uh, the other guy as a scapegoat. But y'all were cheering this man on for eight years and you've been being poisoned. I don't have no personal problems with, you know, with that man. It's just people aren't, they're not researching, they're not looking at the facts. That's what we should be doing. So, hey, they can't, they changed their names from that name so people don't know about them. Yeah, it's always a name change. It's always a face, a mass change with a lot of the stuff that's going on. And you got to dig deeper. The seeds are planted, right? And that's another thing with a lot of, you know, the melanated farmers were getting crap seeds and things so they couldn't do what they needed to do and it kind of made us stagnant for many years. And now that we, there are actually programs out there that are supporting so-called black farmers and people need to take advantage of it when they can, especially now that the uh, real estate economy is kind of Bouncing back a little bit, the prices aren't too high at this moment, and it will be a good time, as many realtors say, to buy right now. So, all presidents are selected. Yeah, they're selected. I don't, I don't believe that we are really, I mean, we're voting, but I, you see, I saw this last election, Electoral College uh, elected the president, so... And they actually let y'all know that. Hey, peace, indigenous realists. You have a channel? Let me check your channel out. Some people are afraid to be the one to say we are the Indians. Oh, yeah, there's lots, lots of people afraid. Including the Indians and the natives. They're very afraid. That's a whole nother subject. I might do another video on that. And there's a lot of misinformation out here. People are really spreading like a divide. And that's when you know something is really wrong. So you're not. We need to be, right now, we, we need to be. The universe is made out of love. Creativity, create, creation is made of love. We need to be showing love to ourselves first and foremost before we think, think about showing hate to everybody else because the hate ain't working. And it, the hate ain't worked for them, for, but for so long. Like even even in Europe, the, the Moors have ruled them longer than what they're ruling now, more years. So y'all, people saying these fake words like, white supremacy and stuff, those, that doesn't even exist because what is that? You know, it doesn't exist. And y'all making it by keep saying it, repeating it, and thinking about it, you're making it exist because you're the one who creates. 
can read some of the comments. So thanks to Jesse Jackson for the African American name. He's an Indian. Yeah, Jesse Jackson's old Cherokee. <laughs> we all know he knows. He ain't never not say he was Cherokee. You know, if y'all watched the Black Indian documentary, at the beginning it's talking about Jesse Jackson and all these people who are Cherokee and all these other uh, Rosa Parks is Chickasaw or Choctaw or something like that. All these people are familiar with their indigenous roots and they 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 just choose not to acknowledge it publicly. Facts, he said facts. And it's for a political reason. And that, that documentary does go into it, saying that they were trying to... And by doing that, it, it helped to erase our indigenous identity, yeah, politics. I'm not, I'm not really a political person. I'm just somebody brought it up. So, we say ancestry would delete our trees, so we would get lazy and get a DNA kit. Yeah, and you notice now that the DNA kit's are on sale for fifty nine dollars. I'm not advertising, but I'm just saying. Like, I noticed when a lot of people were talking about their trees were getting deleted, they magically, I think both of the popular DNA company kits start going on sale for $59, $69. All right, DNA kit sells convenience. Now, there's, there's good things about them because you can find um, recent relatives. Like, you can find cousins and, and things like that, but... To find regional tribes and that stuff is not accurate. And the people moved around. We all know that. So, of course, they're going to make all original people come from Africa. Which a lot of people, tribes in Africa now don't even originate in Africa. So how can they be African? You know, especially in, especially in West Africa. A lot of those tribes are from Asia, from Middle East, from from other parts of Africa, so. I got any more questions? I'm about to get off soon. No website. That's why it's good to do your genealogy and talk to your elders, right? I mean, I've seen this most ridiculous video the other day my cousin sent me, my cousin Phoenix. And one of the guys, I'm not even going to say his name. Y'all probably know who I'm talking about. I was on there had the audacity. To, our elders were delusional by saying that they're Indians. And they was making up stuff because they were mixed bloods and they was really white. <laughs> he was saying crazy stuff, saying that they really... They talk about, oh, we Indian because grandma had long, wavy hair because she's mixed. Huh? They, nobody said nothing. The, the people who said it in our families, a lot of them did not look like that. A lot of them were dark-skinned people. They had Afro 4B hair. Like, come on. Trying to say that our people, our family are crazy. Yes. You got to watch it. I'll send it. To, I'm going to inbox you. Yes, he on there, like, it was a Hebrew sister on there, and she's saying, we are the Indians, right? I'm going, she was like, I'm going by what my family told me and from my research, right? And he's trying to tell her that they lying and they making up stuff and they really mixed breeds and mulattoes and just derogatory stuff. So it's just like, and then you want her, to, and you expect her to listen to you and respect what you're saying, and you basically disrespecting her family, saying that they're delusional, and she needs to take a DNA test, and they go, they will pay for her DNA test. What the hell is the DNA test gonna say compared to genealogy? All right, and anybody who does genealogy and DNA will tell you to rely on the genealogy first. Then. Genealogy is supposed to confirm the DNA results. Yeah, the people are freaking ridiculous. And they're so disrespectful and smug about it, too. It's disgusting. <laughs> really? Okay, you can believe what you want to believe. Some people's family might. I know somebody whose family said that they one of their ancestors is from Africa. And I think 
the other, they married somebody, Chinese person or something. One of my best friends, his, uh, one of his great-grandfathers from Africa, he married, no, great-grandmothers was from Africa, and she married a Chinese man or something. Okay, they, those people, that's their family history, but most of us here, that our family is Indian. They're from here. They're indigenous, like, and I'm not saying people don't got nothing else mixed up in there. I don't know. That's the whole point. I'm not going to tell somebody that they ain't this and they ain't that if I haven't done their genealogy. That's really disrespectful. And if they feel like they want to identify that way, then let them. This is ridiculous. Those people, they want to identify as uh, Egyptians, which we know damn well they're not. Who, your, which great-grandfather is from Egypt? Kemet or whatever. Come on. And I can understand you. I respect the culture and the history over there. Okay, we respect it. We that don't mean you gotta disrespect other people and say I'm this and you're you're not that. That's what all started. The African medallion trend and stuff. Yeah, the nineties kind of um, late eighties, early nineties. They kind of brought that that trend in with the consciousness and stuff. And it wasn't a bad stepping stone, but to disrespect what your elders and your ancestors said about who you are is totally egregious and it's ridiculous. We have two real African Americans in our family. Father is from Africa and the mother is Indian. Yes, yeah, some people do, like some even some of the tribes have certain members who were from Africa. And I know Shinnecock, some of the men were great whalers and they might have brought an African woman home as a wife, okay? But then that person, even with that, she would be adopted by the tribe and would be a tribal member and be a part of the culture. So if she was from there and she wanted to say she was Indian, she could say that, right? So you can't tell people who they are and who they're not. That's that's the crazy stuff. And that's when you know they're scrambling and they, they don't even believe in what they're saying because they're being disrespectful. Y'all, it's messing up again. Y'all hear me? Can you see me? Let me know what's going on. All right. Yeah, I'm back. I, it see it like it has all bars, but like it keeps messing up when I start getting into it. Yeah, it's thought. Yeah, I know. Y'all knows what is going on, and I'm tired. I came. I went to the gym, and I came from the grocery store, so I'm a little tired. Yeah, it's glitchy. I know. You don't have to catch the replay. And thank you. I, let me see who somebody did a super Harry. Thank you, Harry M., for the donation. Uh, I appreciate all the do donations. Folks. So, donations, I'm using this horse channel. You see, I need a new laptop. And I'm going to be traveling this summer and bringing some more exclusive videos with you. Hopefully, I can get some interviews from some people. We'll see. But I'm going to go to different places. Y'all see, y'all always see me go to places, especially y'all on Facebook. <laughs> but I'm going to go to some, you know, let y'all see some places. I've I've been to a couple of reservations. I got some footage I'm gonna might, might be able to put together. It's not mind blowing stuff. That's why I haven't put it out yet. So so you plan to eat Yeah, feel free to email me positive stuff, please. Positive. I haven't really gotten negative, got some weird stuff, but nothing really negative yet. Yeah, so please, I appreciate the donations. I appreciate all the shares and stuff. I'm going to put some more videos out. And then I'm going to bring part two of the, the slave um, slave ships. They're lying about the slave ships or whatever. I can't remember what it's called. So I'm going to put out the evidence or whatever because people were talking trash. There's only men on there talking trash to me saying I'm fake and I haven't shown ever evidence or whatever i'm telling you to go look it up yourself i'm not hiding nothing 
So I'm gonna, I have evidence. Other people, Dr. Fatu, she has seen the evidence. Gabriel Rich, a couple of people have seen the evidence. I've shared it with some people. So it's not like I'm hiding it at all. Don't go off, I'm more at work. I want to donate in a minute. You said five minutes. Okay, B. Lee, said five minutes. Have you been to New York City? Yes, I've been to New York City a couple times. Um, I haven't really tr explored. Usually it's on business or something. So I haven't really been to the city. But if you all invited me up, <laughs> I got some some family up there. So I'm definitely going to come to New York this summer. So I don't know when. Definitely. I have to reconnect with some people. I have to connect with some people. So I'm willing to teach anyone interested how to. What are you trying to teach? Farming? But that's good. Like, we should be teaching each other. And, you know, people need to be compensated as well because people are taking their time out to help. New York got all wild. The Indians. You going to be up in New York or you back in the islands? Let me know. You going to be up there this summer. For citizens, you said Africa is Samaria and America is Atlantis. Um, I'm not that, I'm like, I know a little bit of African history from all the African people that I've grown up with, but I'm not um, well studied in it, so I can't really speak on that. Um, maybe I might be able to interview an African person. But this channel, I wanted to focus on indigenous people, not just America, but you guys seem to like the American stuff, so... Um, I've been doing mostly that, but I can try to get into African indigenous people. You said you'd be in the Caribbean then? Okay. <sighs> but yeah, um, I just forgot the question. Something about New York. Yeah, but yeah, technically a certain part. I don't know if you want to consider the whole Americas Atlantis or a certain part is Atlantis, but the Atlanteans are the Algonquians in antiquity. And I'm not even sure that's what they were called, Atlanteans. But when they people talk about the Atlanteans, they're talking about the Al Algonquians. And the Algonquians, just like I spoke about the Shinnecock, they were tra travelers. They used boats. They did whaling. They did trailing, trading around the world, which a lot of people do not know. And they did colonize other places. But I can go into that in another video. And I'm trying to find the evidence. Um, so I'm not just talking, you know, talking shit, <laughs> basically. I want to have evidence to present with something like that because it sounds far-fetched. But it's in... Um, Algonquin in the oral tradition. A friend told me about this. You said a friend told you about this powwow on the Hudson River in New York. Ah, uh, yeah, they they um I think they have that in September. I want to, I want to say. Um, but there's there's there are like most of the tribes around the Long Island that's in New York. In that area. August 30th to 12th is the crazy trading post Southampton. Oh, that's the Shinnecock Pile. I see it. I, every year people invite me out to it, and I haven't been able to make it in the last three, four years. So hopefully I get to make it this year. You said hi, Tasha. Peace. Hey, Christopher. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go. Like, y'all see me all the time on Facebook. I'm be going to all these powwows. And... Yeah, I need to do that. And hopefully I can find someone who to be my camera woman or man. So there's a power on the Manhattan River too? Okay. You said Ojibwa? Have you heard of it? Yeah, Ojibwa, Ojibwa is Algonquian. It's a dialect of Algonquian. So I'm, like I'm saying, I'm re rebuilding the power ten language, which is a dialect of Algonquian as well. And it's a little different. It's more similar to the Nanticoke or the Nape um, Algonquian. Because th those are people who we uh, traded with and intermarried with. The closest to us. Shinnecock is in September. every Right. It's in, around Labor Day, right? It's around Labor Day. 
What time is it, y'all? Let's see what time it is. Three. Close to three. One fourth of my family is from Mississippi and all Choctaw so far. Are you on the rolls? You should check the rolls and see if they're on there. Could we replace our language with Ojibwa? No, it would be better to repl to replace it with Nanny Coat. Right, you're talking about the Powerton language? So what I have been doing is using the Powerton words that are left in the dictionaries and in historical records and um, looking at the Nanny Coat. And the Nanny Coat is very similar. It's a different accent though, different pronunciations on some of the words. Some have more than one wife also. Who? You're talking about the Chiefs? Now, that's a whole nother video I can do on the, um, polygamy and phalangery because that is not everybody didn't have the opportunity to have multiple spouses. Certain peoples of upper class. All right, greetings, Pony. All right, peace. Who's that original one? Yeah, so the whole, you know, people, this consciousness, mostly conscious brothers are kind of exaggerating the whole polygamy thing, uh, maybe to their own advantage or something. I don't know. How to spell the languages you just spoke about? Uh, power ten. Pow, like powwow. Hat, like a hat on your head. And <laughs> I'm trying to, I, I can't spell in my head. Nanty coat, yes, Nanty coat. People pronounce it pow hatton. It looks similar to Manhattan, and that's the same language group, but it's not the same. It's pow hatton. Power ten, power ten. Yes, yes, chatter. Power ten. Yep. <clears throat> so you say power ten, like more like power, like power plant. Power ten, instead of po hat ten, like a lot of people are saying it's not po hat ten. And Manhattan is not even pronounced like that. It's um, Manhattan, right? It's not Manhattan. It's a European accent kind of messes with the language. Yep, Land of Hills. And, Pow and Powerton is Land of Falls. <clears throat> or where the water falls, something like that. Yeah, Manhattan. So yeah, we we got to get back into our languages too. Um, I think the most used languages would be Cherokee and some form of Algonquin. Algonquin is one of the biggest language groups in northern um, northern America. Let's say Northern Virginia in northern America. So that went through this whole area, which British North America, Canada, you know, and some people link it to languages in Mexico, the Nepal, and it's very similar, but it's different. So you can see where one has spun off from the other. And like I said, the Algonquins are the ancient Atlanteans. And a lot of the Atlantean stuff is kind of exaggerated. We did have a civil... The, that's the whole thing. We had a civilized society here. You especially see that in Mexico, remnants of that. You see that in South America and the Amazon, remnants of it. You said it was actually, uh -huh. and there's some there's some places over here that's under that's buried under. It. You can see. Do you believe Atlantis was actually under? No, it's not. It was never underwater. That's. That's a cartoon. It was 
part of it, one of the major cities was on an island that did sink or, w or went under into the water. Yeah, and that has to do with the Ice Age and things like that. And also what we were doing here. So some of the technology went haywire. And so let's go, Gee. Um, I wouldn't say Muskogee is Algonquian. Uh, we are family, but it's not the same language. And I can't really say which one is older, so I can't really say. Yeah, somebody just said Muskogee is Algonquian. No, I don't think so it is. But for the Powhatan, we are part of the Southern cult, as they call it. And some of our words are uh, partially from that language group as well. So we're, we are at the borderline of that Muscogee Empire and the Algonquian and Iroquois Empire, whatever. So we, like the power then kind of intermarried with the Muscogees and the Tainos and things. So that's why some of us look similar or we have similar results on these DNA tests. Like, a lot of people from Louisiana and stuff say I look like people in their family, <laughs> which is I'm all my, for most of my, well, I thought all of it, m mostly all of my family is from Virginia. I do have an ancestor who who was a chief of the Narragansett, too, as well, and I look like those people, too. But they, they are Algonquian people, so that would make sense. But uh, people from Louisiana is kind of... Or maybe they're not really from Louisiana. They just migrated there. Atlantis. Maybe I'll do a whole another video on Atlantis. I'm going to do another video on Atlantis and um, the Algonquians in Europe and Africa when they went there. Atlantis is a mind state. No, Atlantis was not just a mind state. It is a mind state now, but it was a real place. Like, it was... A real, I wouldn't say, play, it was a civilization, right? So in the oral tradition, especially through Ajibwa, they say that the, Atlante the Atlanteans are the Algonquins. Yeah, a lot of people migrated from the East, especially Virginia, because especially the people who were enslaved, um, they sent a lot of people from Virginia down the river to Louisiana and Virginia and Maryland were kind of used as breeding farms for some of the people. And a lot of the women, the Piscata way, especially women, were used to breed uh, with different different men for different tribes and, and the Africans or whoever else they had for slaves, the Europeans. You say you're people from Orange. Yeah, Orange is in central Virginia. Or am I related to who? Tuscarora. No, I'm not a Tuscarora. I'm related to Nataway, which is another um, Iroquois group. Thank you, Bailey. When you look up the old maps, the whole lower region of North America was once Louisiana, hence many of us thinking we're from the state. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, it was the whole bot, bottom part was Louisiana or Florida, depending on the time period. Interchangeable. Yes, it's both an ethnicity and a language. It's like French is. We have French people, and people speak French. Virginia had a law that if you were not in slavery, you must leave the state. Um. That's not necessarily true because my whole family was free and they were lived in Virginia. Now, the law definitely pertained to people of Af African people, for sure, who were only brought here for slavery at that time. But this whole towns like Petersburg, around Petersburg, Charles City and stuff that were full of free Fredericksburg. There was a whole bunch of free people of color. I've seen the records. I know from my own family. So whatever that law supposedly was supposed to be doing, it didn't do anything. 
There's also a whole bunch of court cases of free people who lived here and was not forced to move. Now, if they did something, it was one case I saw this lady. She murdered her boss. She was like a maid or something. She was a free woman. Uh, she murdered her boss and she went on trial like she should have. And she was forced to leave because she committed a crime. But the regular citizens who pay taxes, no. And they also had free registers free Negro registers that the people had to register every year. I think every year or every two years. Um, but the people had to register so that they knew. So if they were forced to leave, then why would there be so many, every county having a free Negro register? Right? So I don't know. A lot of Pan-Africans are spreading that, um, talking about that quote-unquote law. But... You you can go, I mean, I'm in Virginia. I know my family tree, and all those people were free, and they did not have to move, so. It's a facts, right. Is anyone from Cherokee Nation from the Ma Martinsburg, West Virginia, the last name Hill and Hillman? Oh, I'm not sure. I know they were there, though. Do you have any connection to Harris names between North Carolina? I'm not sure. I know I went to school with people named Harris. He said, my great granny was dark skinned with long white hair. She's listed as mulatto. Yeah, as a whole lot. Like, my great grandmother, she is very dark skinned. And um, she had wavy hair. And she is down as colored. She claims to be a full blood Mattapanai. And she knew, like, she has taught me a lot of the oral history. Like, a lot of stuff that I'm presenting to you guys, she told me. And I went to do the research to confirm what she's saying. So, a lot of stuff about the people coming from Mexico and stuff, she told me that stuff when I was a child. And I was like, oh, this is some BS. And I, I came to her asking, like, who, like, what, what ancestors was from Africa? And she laughed at me, y'all. She laughed and said, we ain't from no Africa. It's like, she's mad at an eye. That's what she said. And she went on to tell us the history of how our clan migrated from Mexico. And we were down there. And we were this royal group. And they had to leave. Right, because they were the they were um, it's the wolf clan. They were healers and things like that, shamans. What we doing? And I only know a little bit about the Garifana people. I don't even know if I'm pronounced. Unless I just see you trying to recreate your family tree, having a hard time. Great grandmother was from Crew, Virginia. Any advice on how to research this? Um, I'm going to do a whole other video on genealogy, um, especially Virginia genealogy. So you might want to tune in for that one. But, but I would, you know, I would say check with the Library of Virginia. That's the most simplest thing. Garifuna or mixed Arawak with the Carib who fled South America. Yeah, I remember I saw a video of the Garif fauna speaking their language and then they they interviewed this group from central america i forget which tribe it was and the people understood each other they were speaking the same language did your mom speak the language um i am not about y'all know me i'm not about that paperwork and I don't want to be disrespectful to people. I really don't. There's not really the F, the SF 181 is for government employees. It's not for regular citizens. So you filling that out does absolutely nothing. You're reporting to the government as a government employee. So a lot of people are saying they're doing these things to not be working for the birth certificate 
as an employee or whatever, but you're reporting as an employee. Paul Heinig has a book out, The Free Negro. Yeah, there's a whole website. If you go to, in, instead of buying, I know his book is expensive. So they're like, each volume is like $100. You can find it in the library. Or you can just go to freeafricanamericans.com and he has everything up for free. Because he and his wife are really trying to help people reconnect with their genealogy. So, so he makes his money off the library purchasing the books, I guess. And people donate too. I think he has a donate option. You can donate to him. He said FS181. Yeah, it's some type of form that um, the Moors are telling people that they need to fill out and change their ethnicity, but that's for a government employees only. And I have family members who are government employees. So they are like, this for us, it's not for regular people. It doesn't, not, it doesn't really do anything for them either. Thank you, you enjoy your day too, Captain. Captain. That family in Texas, Louisiana, they seen documents on ancestry about the Dawes rules where family members were denied. Yeah, there's a lot of records. Like even in your library, they have um, they have editions of books that just have the denied applications for the rules, and you can still look up your family. And I mean, even if they got denied, it's good to look it up because they have like a whole interview. So you would get a whole bunch of information about your ancestors if they fill out the application and had the interview. They'll ask them where they're born, who their parents' names, uh, what job they do, why they uh, are, are implying, what tribe or which clan they come from, things like that. So those are still good to look up even if they were denied. And I don't think you're going to find all that online. Um, if you go to certain libraries, I would contact your local library chain. They might be able to um, assist you or tell you another library in the area that has those volumes. Uh, the Library of Congress has it. I've seen them there. And I've seen them in one of my local libraries as well. Um, there are some roles online, but I think most of the ones online are the people who were ac accepted. Sorry, I'm pulling apart this thing. All right, peace, y'all. I got to get going. Um, handle the rest of my day. Uh, what would you say, be down? You won't suggest? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't suggest filling out that form. Right. That F, SF81. And, you know, a lot of people have been ripping off people, charging them $2,500 for the form when you can find it online for free. That's a whole nother story. So, <laughs> anyways, thank you, Joe. So the Cherokee had a priesthood from Mexico. Andy Kulani. Oh, I've heard that name before. Long story short, our empire stretched all over America. You're right, Joe. Thank you for the donation. You are 100% correct. That's what, that's what my, basically what my grandmother was telling me. Like, I can't remember everything. Like, when I started doing research, some of the things, like, clicked to what she had told me before. Because we thought, like, me and my brother thought she was insane. They're like, we Mexicans? <laughs> like, we're not Mexicans. It sounds, like, crazy. And then we, like, we stumbled across the Omex and different things like that. And we were like, okay, they... These look like us, and great, great grandma's not crazy. <laughs> but it just sound like I see. I'm coming up in nine, like early nineties and stuff, asking her this question as a child, and it just sound crazy because they're teaching us all this back to Africa stuff and ex clan and everything, and she's talking about Mexico. I'm like we don't look like Mexicans. Like maybe mixed with Mexicans. <laughs> but whatever 
as part of your family comes from Virginia, the free people of Virginia. You know, there's a lot of information on the free families of Virginia. If you research it, you'll come across. And we, and we have volumes of um, books on our families as well. Some of them were well-to-do. We're all over this land, exactly. Exactly, and like, like um, Joe was saying, a lot of those clans couldn't come from Mexico, like certain clans. He said the Ani, ooh, what am I doing? The Ani Kulani and other different clans, right? Wolf Clan is one of them. I don't know if this, if, he, if he's referring to the same thing, but there's a wolf clan in almost all the tribes, right? I know Cherokee has a wolf clan. The Algonquian different tribes, the Algonquian tribes have wolf clan. <laughs> You don't remember seeing the name Cheadle. <sighs> yeah, but I would check. Like everybody, when y'all doing your genealogy, just check the rules and see what's on there. So, yes, I've heard of Dame. We we were Facebook friends. I think we all know Dame. Didn't Atlantis and Samaria go to war against each other? Um, I'm not sure. And I think the Atlantis uh, civilization, I can't really talk on that one. Now the Atlantis, I can talk on Atlantis people migrating from here over to Europe. They came through the Mediterranean, Northern Africa. Um, Brit they went to Britain, different places like that, and you will see that cultural influence there. And certain tribes, um, certain groups are the Atlanteans or Algonquians, but they're going by different names, like the Cartaginians and things like that. But I would have to go, I'm still doing the research on that, so I can't really speak too much. Any resources of our different spiritual practices uh actually this <laughs> this phone is sitting on a book about our spirit is about our spirituality and it's called native north american spirituality of the eastern woodlands and it's a western spirituality classic who is the author i don't even know if it has an author to it uh, edited by Elizabeth Tooker, prefaced by William S. St uh, what? Storty Vance. Storty Vance. So I got this off of um, Amazon.com. So it's called Native North American Spirituality of the Eastern Woodlands. Sacred Myths, Dreams, Visions, Speeches, Healing Formulas, Rituals, and Ceremonials. So that's something good to start. Prophecies. Uh, I'm gonna do another video on prophecies. I was talking. About, I was just talking about the prophecies earlier about the ancient ones coming back. Like once the um, animals, because a lot of animals in Virginia and in North Carolina and different places like that have been coming back. Like the wild turkeys, coyotes, wolves. Um, I can't remember the other ones. Uh, but a lot of everything but the buffalo then came, <laughs> then came back, and that signs that the ancient ones will rise and create a new nation. And the ancient ones are supposed to defeat the current powers, and not really defeat, but create a new. Right. So these prophecies are saying that. It's going to be a new nation created from the ancient nation, the ancient ones. All right, but um, what time is it? It's about nine twenty. I'm mean, not nine. It's about two twenty. <laughs> Can you post the title? Yeah, I'll post the. I'm gonna post the book, the picture of a book, with the title and the link to the um, Amazon, where you can buy it and purchase it. And then I'm going to go through the book and we're going to do another video so we can talk about spirituality. 
I just want to touch on it briefly in relation to in relations to um, being self sufficient, and that's very in languages bringing our languages back. So we need to bring our languages back, our traditions on how to be self sufficient, and also our spirituality. So, and we bring in our wildlife. You're right. We bring the wild. It's good to see the wildlife come back. But thank you guys. And when Gapo Nita, Nita means friends. So when Gapo Nita, and I'll see you another time.